Hi, welcome to the Earth Science Classroom, the channel dedicated to all things Earth Science, videos, chats, discussions, and examples, and today we're in volcanology, all right, all about volcanoes, and we're looking at the eruptions and all the kind of features and different components that uh, eruptions include, different volcanoes, different sizes, based on the VEI scale, and all different features that come with it. So we're going to look at... First, the types of volcanoes, and then we're going to look at the, basically the characteristics and the features with a nice flow chart and a nice, a nice diagram to discuss. And we're going to link it up to the various examples and different features during an eruption. We can link up different examples for each one. So uh, join us now for the Volcanic Eruptions video. So first, let's start with the basics. What is an eruption? An eruption is a flow or ejected material or ejected pyroclastic material from the Earth's surface, from a crack in the Earth's surface, a vent, a crater, um, and it could be from simply a fissure volcano, which is literally a crack in, in the ground, or it could be from a very large, impressive shield volcano like Mauna Loa in Hawaii, or it could be a very uh, explosive, energetic, and deadly stratovolcano like a Tambora, Krakatoa, Mount Vesuvius, or more recently Calbuco in Chile in 2015, or even Mount Etna in 2020. All these are basically examples of when there is an outpouring of heat, gases, and material, rocks, and different elements coming out of the Earth's surface into the atmosphere or flowing onto the surface and it is a way of transfer of heat like with the mid-ocean ridges and the exchange of gases and some way to balance or have an equilibrium with the earth's climate system so volcanoes have a very important role in long-term climate change whether it is a positive feedback loop or change or a negative where it brings it back to the, the steady state equilibrium I mentioned pyroclastic, and that's a very important word to, to look at. So pyro comes from Greek word for fire, and plastic comes from fragments or a mixture. So it's basically a combination of lots of different materials, but it's in the environment of a volcano, which is obviously superheated to temperatures. You know, lava can be between you know 650 degrees Celsius up to maybe 1250 degrees Celsius. Gases can come out at the same kind of temperature. Superheated material can come out and it will cool quickly when this material enters the atmosphere as the atmosphere is a lot colder than the interior or the interior of the crust the interior of the earth. So what are the types of eruptions? Start with uh, saying that there are small, short duration eruptions or long duration eruptions based on the type of volcano so you know whether you have uh, basically a shield or strato or a cinder or scoria or fissure there are different types of eruptions that are associated with different kinds of volcanoes however the main two i want to look at is monogenic monogenetic what we have is mono is singular one and poly means many or multiple so in terms of eruptions a volcano can be created by a single volcanic eruption event now these monogenetic eruptions are generally long lasting over the course of a matter of hours or days and what is produced generally are basically high volumes of pumice, maybe some tuff, which are volcanic rocks, very uh, light, um, and blasted bits of rock, and also tephra, which is ash deposited on the Earth's surface from the volcanic eruption. And what happens is these can accumulate over the long lasting eruption and form scoria or cinder volcanoes. Now, as I mentioned before in the Cinders video, which you can link to and watch in the corner, cinders are generally smaller than 300 meters in elevation, and they are grouped together, and they usually form on the side of larger stratovolcanoes. 
based on the eruptions. Now, polygenic is obviously to do with multiple ongoing eruptions over the course of a eruption cycle. Could be tens of years or thousands of years or millions of years, depends on the volcano. But there is a cycle, a, a, a pattern of eruptions that would happen over the course of time. Now, of course, nothing is perfectly scheduled. We know when it's going to erupt, but there are patterns and cycles that we can appreciate with most of these big volcanoes. But it's going to erupt multiple times. And these are generally uh, to do with shield and strato or composite volcanoes. Now, why is it uh, important to know? Because the shield's going to grow bigger through multiple consistent lava flows, generally basaltic lava, lava, lava flows. And the strato and composite are named because of the alternating layers of lava and ash, and they grow taller with a very steep, narrow uh, edifice or face. Um, because of these consistently erupting volcanoes over time, layering on ash and lava to create the composition of these volcanoes. So that's monogenetic and polygenic. So I've drawn a gen general stratovolcano. It's narrow, it's steep size, 30 degree angles, and it's basically a layered of lava and ash composition with this purple conduit system of a central vent inside uh, dikes and uh, maybe some funerals releasing the gases from the volcano could be a parasitic cone or some cinder cones on, on the on the slopes of this volcano but in terms of the eruption features we're going to look at is obviously the first thing you notice is the large ash cloud so up comes this large ash cloud so during an eruption you get the eruption cloud coming out of generally the central vent or it could come out of side vents or lateral vents or even a parasitic cone you have what's called an eruption cough that vertical very um, energized energetic in, uh, emission of blasted out uh, mixture of pyroclastic gases and rock fragments at super high temperatures and the gases are generally going to consist of water vapor, which is the largest. Okay, some CO2, some SO2, maybe some NO2. These are mostly greenhouse gases, especially water vapor, and obviously the uh, mixture of fragments of rock that have been blasted, so parts of the top of the volcano could also become part of the mixture of um, the eruption column and the ash cloud so generally this is the ash cloud and as it starts to rise higher and higher in the atmosphere we get less pressure but also less heat so it's going to expand and rise at the same time and really billow out like a massive mushroom cloud until it reaches the stratosphere where it starts to accumulate and start to move due to the stronger winds or failing winds or even Get stream depends on the latitude of the volcano. So you get this billowing out effect coming out. Now, you get the wind, prevailing wind, it's gonna let's say it's moving this direction, it's gonna move the ash cloud. And what happens is you start to get the heavier particles, the heavier pyroclastic material is gonna start to fall back to earth due to gravity. The falling ash debris or ash deposits, it's going to slowly fall down, like really thick, hot, toxic, very uh, hard to see through with uh, limited visibility, is called tephra. And the tephra can, basically is pyroclastics, but can come in different sizes. So if it's very, very small, if it's less than two millimeters, in diameter, then we call it ash, very fine particles. If it's larger than two to 64 millimeters in diameter in size, we call this lapilli. It's like little flakes, like like snowflakes, but they are hot burning pieces of, of rock, basically, and gas. So it's like if you are you know, having an outdoor, you know, wood burning fire or fire pit, and you see those little bits of, of, 
of burnt wood, the cinders flying off into the air, being carried out by, you know, the, the wind basically, or air particles, and it's flowing out, and you see that, but they're, they're large enough, and they're called lapilli. And then, if, for example, you get more of a uh, explosive, angrier eruption, maybe in the BEI 3, 4, 5, and onwards range, you could get what's called ejected particles. So, so ejected particles, this is going to be larger than 64 millimeters. Now, this could be the size of small cars, the size of a small apartment. It depends on the volcano and the size. But when it actually erupts, the constant or the, the, the need for the volcano to get rid of all of the pyroclast material that's going to erupt over time and the energy and the trapped pressure from the gases and the type of magma usually going to be uh, andesitic, dacite, or very rarely rhyolitic, which is very, very high in silica, therefore high in gas content, and therefore high in pressure, generally leading to more explosive, dangerous eruptions. The parts of the volcano, parts of the edifice, parts of the slope, like this part right here, could get broken off and basically ejected and propelled a massive catapult through the air as, as part of the eruption. So not only would you have the ash cloud rain down different sized particles on the shrine area, and obviously covering the sky, making it very hard to breathe, okay, and filling it with toxic gases, but also you've got these massive chunks of volcanic <laughs> rocks flying through the air, and they're called either blocks, or volcanic bombs. Now, both of these are not very nice to, to be close to during an eruption in general, but blocks are just the solid bits of vol volcanic material that the volcano is made of, being blasted and shot out of the volcano and lands anywhere. Bombs, they're more exciting. They basically are clumps of really thick, high silica, high viscosity magma or lava and on the outside it's coated with rock so as it flies through the air the outside interacts with the atmosphere it's very cold and it accelerates the cooling process like the crust on a pie and it makes a crust of rock on the outside of the of the flying lava through the air and these could be the size of cars and once it hits the ground the outside shell of thin rock that has just been crystallized and consolidated is going to crack open like an egg and out flows and out sprays this volume of hot viscous lava in all directions like a grenade basically a massive volcanic grenade which spits out lava and causes fires death destruction you name it so these are pretty insane Suvius had some I'm pretty sure tambora had some I'm pretty sure the Yellowstone eruption, uh, of all three Yellowstone eruptions that we've recorded, had it as well. So the next feature I want to look at is ignibrites. And this is Latin for fire cloud, basically. Fire cloud and rock combination. And is a selection of different types of fiery clouds, fiery ash clouds, that are ejected from the volcano and controlled by gravity and the size and the volume and mass also would dictate the speed and how far it would flow. What happens is you get this huge amount of ejected ash cloud material and up at like a very short time. So up comes this very large like bulge explosion of gas and it comes up what happens is gravity because it's a lot of a high volume, high mass, gravity takes hold of it straight away and brings it straight down you get this basically this fiery cloud flowing down the sides of the volcano. Now, this is called a pyroclastic cloud, or it's called a flow. So either one can be used. And this cloud can be extremely hot of temperatures, you know, over 400 degrees Celsius. 
flowing at around between 60 to 100 kilometers per hour. Some have been up to 200, 250. Also depends on the steepness and the uh, the mass of the cloud. But just basically, you know, the, the sheer temperature and speed and the sheer ability that it just can't predict it. Obviously, if you're there, there's no chance of surviving. It takes out forests, takes out structures. Things are instantly burnt to a crisp. And one of the cool ones, or the most dangerous ones, is a is a noir ardent, which is a French word for basically a very large, fiery glowing cloud, which is a very dangerous type of pyroclastic cloud, which is going to flow down the side of the mountain and basically destroy anything in its path. This happened uh, famously in Mount Pele in the island of Martinique in the Caribbean in 1902, and it kind of uh, was a big defining feature of a Palayan eruption type. So the type of eruption is based around this very dangerous, very aggressive Nue Ardent type of pyroclastic cloud and flow. So that again is extremely uh, scary in addition to the tephra, the accumulation of ash deposits in the ground, which can suffocate people, cover soil, cover uh, roofs, collapse building structures, you name it. And then we're going to talk about the lava. So generally, you have some some parts of the eruption that have lava. Now, you might have lava coming out of a side vent, you know, coming out here from the side vent. You might have uh, some cracks and fissures open up in parts of the volcano, depends on the eruption. You might have the central vent blow some lava out as well uh, down the sides. Now, generally with these stratos, you're going to have, like I mentioned before, mostly andesitic, desitic, occasionally relitic magma, so it is high viscosity, so this magma isn't going to flow very far or very fast. It's thick, it's blocky, um, it's going to you know, be hot, but it's on the cooler side of lava uh, temperature. So you do get the lava coming through. Now you do get also earthquakes, both magmatic, both shallow and deep. Magma moves, moves the rocks, moves the cause earthquakes. Earthquakes can cause landslides, like famously in Mount St. Helens in 1980, which was the largest recorded landslide ever, which caused the lateral blast on the north side of the volcano, caused by the bulge, basically. But the, land, the landslide was triggered by the earthquake. And also, we're going to look at Lahars, which I think are really cool. Now, Lahars starts with a bunch of ice and snow that would accumulate at the summit of these very tall, high elevation volcanoes. Kilimanjaro, Mount Fuji, Cascade Range in Northwest United States, and Canada and British Columbia, Alaska, uh, Aleutian Islands. So you get these very tall, very imposing volcanoes. And because of the elevation, you get pretty much year round snow and ice accumulation at the summit. What happens when a volcano happens, erupts is you get this, this real intense heat. Very quickly, it's going to cover the top of the mountain, the volcano. Temps in excess of 800 to 1,000 degrees. Now you take that, you're going to superheat all the ice and snow. You may even cause it to sublimate and go straight into gas, the ash cloud. But you might get where the snow and ice rapidly melts, turns into water, and flows very quickly down the sides of this very steep, imposing volcano that's thousands of meters high. This flowing huge amount of ice and snow, thousands and thousands of tons of ice and snow, suddenly melt and flow down the side of the volcano. This is called a lahar. Now, as it flows down, down across the uh, slopes of the volcano, it's going to pick up soil, pick up mud, pick up stones, debris, structures, trees, branches, you know, anything that humans have built around the volcano is going to pick it up and basically include it in the debris of this massive flow of water and ice. 
and it's usually like mud, brown, very, very um, torrent water, very torrential, uh, very like high intensity, high energy. And it flows down the river uh, valleys and the catchment areas and the watersheds overflowing the there's existing river uh, catchments and riversides and basically flowing down the river very quickly. Now it hits villages and this is kind of like a thick mud by the time it reaches the lower slopes. So when it actually goes down to an area where it's flat terrain and the water starts to slow down, lose energy, and all that mud's going to deposit down, it actually turns into thick mud and eventually into a solid material. So anything that's caught under or inside this volume of basically a, 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 a volcanic mudslide will be trapped inside and they're not rescued, they're going to be buried alive in this solid mudslide, basically, which is awesome and scary at the same time. So yeah, there we have it. This is, you know, all the different features that can happen or have happened with various eruptions. Now, some eruptions have just lava. Some eruptions have just the ash cloud. Some eruptions have everything. And you think the world's going to end by the poor people in Pompeii or people that were around uh, Tambora or Krakatoa. Obviously, there weren't any humans in America when Yellowstone blew, but Yellowstone might blow in the future, and that would be horrific if you were nearby. This is the Earth Science Classroom. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed the content. Uh, check out more videos on our channel. And don't forget to subscribe. Thank you again.